Hi, welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure to uh, hit that subscribe button, give us a like, ring the bell, check out our social media. Today on the podcast, I am very excited to have an uh, amazing guitar player, Rowan Robertson. How are you doing today, Rowan Robertson? Good, Jason Froberg. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> doing great, man. It's uh, It's been a rushed morning, but I'm glad we made it happen. We got you on the, uh, the Skype today and... Uh, Ready to just kick some butt and, and do another podcast for the people, man. So Awesome. Good. Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. Good to be here. Thanks ever so much. That's awesome. So uh, how, what you been up to since uh, I know Vegas has been opening back up? I know you were playing with uh, Rock Bolt before uh, the pandemic happened. Is that getting going again or what you been up to? Um, well, we're hoping it gets going again. We, uh, The owner of the show is, is telling us that uh, they're looking to do it next year. So obviously we'll see what happens with that. And then um, at the beginning of the pandemic, I well just before the just before then, I started a project with Les Warner. Oh, I, I love Les. From, oh yeah, yeah, he's in town here, and a good friend of mine. We did the show together, and so we we I, I knew this singer in India called um, Giris Pradhan, and you might be familiar with his group in India. They're called um, Girish and the Chronicles. G A G A T C. They're on. They've just signed to Frontiers. Oh, really? In the Chronicles. Yeah, and um, they're really good. You can find them on YouTube. But anyway, so I I emailed him, and we got chatting, and he he said well, let's do a project together. So Les and I were sending him music, and over that year we put together and produced three songs and a video, uh, which are out now, and that's under the name Custard Pie. Oh really? And it's yeah, it's out now. You can get it on Spotify, Apple, this, whatever. There's like a load of them, uh, all the main outlets anyway. And uh, so yeah, it's custard pie, and it's sort of um, I suppose a little bit Zeppelin, as you'd imagine, like a '70s hard rock thing. So we're really we're really proud of it. That's awesome. So what's uh what's Les playing on there? I know he's a multi instrumentalist. Is he playing drums again or? Drums, yeah. yeah, and he played bass on one of the tracks too. He played bass on one of the tracks as well. Awesome, yeah, he's, yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah, I he see, really is. Yeah, he does the uh, what is it, the Tom Petty tribute around town where he plays bass full time in that band. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, is it? Is it? Uh, no, he did bass in it, but yeah, they play. Uh, they play all over the country. Yeah, the uh, was it? You got lucky. I think Peter Dallas plays bass in that. Isn't that it? Or I don't remember. I'm not sure. I know. Uh, I know Dan Grenis. Okay. Dan Grenis is the singer. Okay. Yeah. And he's a, a really good bass player. And he plays on the rock ball. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, the Rock Vault show is uh, amazing for people who don't know about the uh, the Rock Vault show. It's here in Vegas, and it's a bunch of uh, rock stars from like the '70s, '80s, '90s, all getting together, jamming a bunch of great tunes and. Uh, yeah, it's just you never know who's going to show up, man. That's one of my favorite things about the Rock Vault. You guys have some amazing artists on there, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's been been amazing to play with Howard Lease because he's the main guitar player. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's been there since the beginning. Yeah, and he's he's uh, obviously played on all that heart stuff from Barracuda all the way through the 80s, everything. And, uh, you know, playing with a musician of that caliber, you learn a lot. Yeah, he's been doing it for a long time, man. And he's a fantastic yeah. guitar player. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He I, plays with uh, Bad Company now, Paul Rogers. Is he playing with Paul Rogers' Bad Company? Yeah, yeah. I saw him at the uh, saw him at the uh, the center here, the T Mobile Center, whatever. Oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. I didn't know he was doing that jam. I love Bad Company, man. Paul Rogers is an amazing oh, yeah. vocalist. Yeah, definitely. I love some old Bad Company, some old Free. Paul Rogers Free. Oh, yeah, that that was a killer band with Paul Rogers Free. My, me and my brother loved yeah. Free. Yeah, and that was, yeah. That's uh. Paul Copper. Yeah, yeah. You guys ever gonna have Paul Rogers in Rock Vault, or have you had Paul Rogers at Rock Vault? No, no, no he never came in. I, I, I don't know. I doubt, doubt it. But we we did play with quite a few people. We did some shows. I got to play with um. Uh, uh, Lou Graham. Lou Graham. Oh, did a, amazing. Do a song with. With Lou Graham and also with uh, Richie Sambora. <laughs> oh, from uh, Bon cool Jovi, that? man. That's amazing. Yeah. He's such a good player, too. Yeah. Yeah, I got to yeah. see, uh, who was it? Bobby from Toto, the lead singer from Toto, when I went in one time. Oh, that was yeah. super fun. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
we did a show with him too. Yeah. So it's yeah. been it's been really awesome. I mean, you got Robin Robin uh, Robin McCauley and uh, Paul Shortino and um, Blas Elias and uh, Michael T. Ross. Um, God, who else is in it? Doug Aldrich. That's who I'm. Sort of, that's who I sort of took over for. Doug Aldrich was in it for me and Tracy Guns. Anyway. Oh yeah, so that, I know that, Doug that, and Tracy, man. They used to come to the club all the time, man. Uh, that was yeah, it was really cool having Doug in the band and uh, man, Paul yeah, Shortino. Nice. I gotta have Paul in the show soon, man. He's one of my favorite vocalists. Anytime he walks on stage, I have to crank the preamplifier way down because that dude's voice is a powerhouse. I mean, he just yeah, puts out vocals. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, yeah. Powerful, powerful. Yeah. He's, he's awesome. He's a really good, really good guy too. We're actually working together at the moment. Oh really? You and Paul Shortino? Yeah. What are you yeah. doing with uh, What are you doing with Paul right now? I'm uh, I'm very interested. Doing a new King Cobra album. Oh, awesome! Yeah. You guys yeah. You guys doing that at his house? I know he has a pretty cool studio set up at his yeah. house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I sent some riffs to him and uh, and Carmine had some drum parts and Carmine said, "Oh yeah, I like the riffs." And Paul liked the riffs, so we all started. Oh, and the other guitar player is Bobby from. Um, Sorry, Robbie Lockner oh, from, okay. uh, from Great White. Yeah. So, anyway, that's that, and, and we're 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 getting together over at Paul's and putting the songs together to some drums of Carmine's, and it should be a really good record, actually. It's that's out a nice. fucking super group right there, man. Carmine <laughs> Appice, yeah. Ron Robertson, yeah, Paul Shortino. Do who's uh, who's playing bass on that? Johnny Rod. Oh, tight. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's a that's an amazing little super group you guys got going on. I'm stoked. I can't wait to hear that. That's gonna be Thanks. awesome. Yeah, so uh, how how's it coming along? You guys have uh, most of the album like kind of figured yeah. out. You're just in the recording process now. Yeah, well, not quite the recording process yet, but I think I think maybe one more song to go, or something like that. That's you awesome. You know, we're doing good good lyrics and outlines of everything and all the riffs and everything's in place and arrangements and everything. I haven't actually started recording it yet. Oh, cool. Are you guys planning on going into uh, any of the studios around town or recording to some more special? Or are you guys going to just try to do it at uh, Paul's and like Pro Tools and everything? I think I'll be doing the guitars at Paul's, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. beautiful this, these days, man. You don't got to go spend $50,000 at a recording studio to get a record made. You know, you can hang out with your buddy at your house. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, it really is amazing. Yeah, and he's got a cool setup, yeah. man. He's got that uh, C24 in his house, man, a big digital uh, desk. Or he used oh, to. Yes. When I, last time I was over there, he had a big uh, Control 24 desk set up. So that's that's yeah. always a fun tour yeah. to play with. Yeah. 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 That's awesome, man. Well, cool. I look forward to that King Cobra album big time. That's fantastic. So, yeah, um, I know... I know one of your biggest claims to fame is uh, when you were playing with uh, Dio. Uh, you started playing uh, with Dio when you were only 17 years old, man. You replaced uh, Craig Gordy, which is like a big deal Craig back Gordy, then. Yeah. yeah, that was a big deal back in the day, man. And uh, yeah, I just was going to say, uh, how, did, how did it feel to be that young joining such a super uh, group like or an amazing rock group like Dio? Uh, it was... It was uh, like a fairy tale, really, you know. It was uh, going from my bedroom in, in rural, uh, quiet English, um, you know, setting to uh, to Los Angeles, you know, at the end of the metal years, and, uh, you know, going to house parties and, and uh, you know, writing songs with Dio and these studios and, a dream come true. It's a real dream come true. Obviously, that's amazing. How did they? Uh, how did they discover you? What were you? Uh, what were you playing when they figured out that you were the guy? Well, I heard that Craig Goldie was parting companies with with the group, and I read it in like Kerrang and Metal Hammer, which was the magazines back then. Um, and uh, I decided because I was a big big Bi fan. I mean, I was a big fan of lots of guitar players, but, but the thing in my head was Steve Bi got the gig with Zappa at like 18. So I, I thought I have to, I have to get a gig like that, you know? Yeah. So anyway, so I, I, it was like my dream and I thought about it all the time and I, uh, sent, sent a tape, uh, you know, a, a cassette tape of, of me playing to last in line, you know, just jamming over it and some solo guitar playing and uh, 
I sent it off to the record company and uh, they they sent me the tape back and said they weren't interested. So I figured, <laughs> well, so I figured it never got to Ronnie and uh, never got to Dio. So I sent it to the fan club in Los Angeles. Oh, and uh, yeah, and then I f- had forgotten about it because some months went by and I got a call from, from Wendy Dio one night. So it was like, then two weeks I was on a plane, I was in LA for the audition. We auditioned at the, uh, the alley in the valley. And uh, yeah, then they gave me another audition and I was told I had the gig. And they said, right, we'll go home, get your stuff and come back. And so it was just literally like overnight. And then that was it. I was here. <laughs> Crazy story, isn't it? <laughs> That's amazing, man. So you guys, uh, did you end up just like going right on tour with them or did you go into the studio? What happened after you joined the band? Went in in 10 months of writing. So we started in like February and ended around Christmas or whatever it was, uh, writing the whole album in uh, various rehearsal rooms in uh, LA. That's amazing. So were you a big part of the writing process or uh, did they kind of have their ideas already going? Yeah, you, you were writing the songs and everything, huh? Totally, yeah. Um, Ronnie used to ask what his guitar player had as as far as riffs goes. And you'd put out like, you know, just 25 little little ideas. Uh, And he'd pick one and say, oh, that's good. Let's work it out. And they didn't only come from his guitar player. He came up with the riff for Lock Up the Wolves. And um, obviously in the studio, everyone threw their ideas in the hat. Uh, Jimmy Bain put a lot of riffs in because uh, he was in the band when we wrote it. Um, and uh, so everyone put their ideas in. So it was a real collaborative effort in a rehearsal room. The whole album was written that way. I think there was this ideas for maybe one or two songs existing before then. Yeah, I always like writing songs like that when everybody's just kind of jamming and feeling the vibe as opposed to like totally. writing in an, uh, you know, isolation, hanging out by yourself with your guitar just going, I think this is going to be a good song, but you never really hear it with the drums and everything first. Yeah. yeah. It's all about, I mean, I don't know about all the time, but I often find that when those good ideas come out, like a good little drum part or guitar part, whatever it is, um, like you say, it's like there's like a vibe happening in the rehearsal room or chemistry happening with someone or um, you're excited about something, you know, working on a project or there's, there's something going on sort of feeding that excitement. You know? Yeah, I love that vibe, man. That's always the best. Uh, so after you guys wrote the album, man, what'd you guys do? You guys uh, hit the road, you go on, the, go on a tour to promote the album. Where'd you guys start out at? Uh, we started out in Poughkeepsie, New York, and me and the um, me and the drum tech rat um, almost got mugged. <laughs> Tell me about that. Show. <laughs> well, we we were at the rehearsal for the gig in Poughkeepsie, and as I remember it, some people came back and they said, "Oh, there's there's a subway to eat around the corner." So we went out and we went into a liquor store and on his BMX bike, and I would have been on the back, I guess. And in the liquor store, he gets his wallet out, and there's some guys watching us, and he got, like, this bad vibe, whatever. So he says to me, take this, get on the bike, and go. So I took it, I ran out, jumped on his bike, and he ran out after me. And as I remember it, they came after us. I can't remember that well. But <laughs> I think they came after us. But we didn't get we didn't get hurt or anything. Uh, freaking New York, man! It's a dangerous town. I guess Poughkeepsie probably can be, right? I don't know. Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, you guys started in uh, start in New York, and then what? You guys do a big world tour? Or was it just a U.S. tour? You got any good stories from like touring or anything like that? Um, we did, we did, uh, the U S uh, and then we went over to Europe for five dates supporting Metallica oh, on yeah. and justice. Yeah. On and justice for all. So that's like amazing. Um, I remember, I remember, uh, James and, uh, sorry, Lars and, and 
Kurt were really, really friendly and like, come on, let's go, let's do this, let's do that, you know, when we're hanging out with them. And the only time I met James, it was in a bar and the record company was there. So it was like this sort of a record company thing and it was in bars. And he was sitting at the table by himself, kind of real stern. And I said, I said to him, oh, can I buy you a drink? And he goes, why do you want to buy me a drink when the record company is here? <laughs> <laughs> that's the only, that's the only, the only uh, time I ever spoke to him. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, because yeah. uh, drinks are on the label, right? Every, they're they're yeah, covering the exactly. bill and party as much as you <laughs> want. Yeah, that's right. And uh, so we did five five dates with Metallica, and uh, Bonham were also on the bill. Oh, uh, nice. And then then we went we we did the we did the Monsters Festival in Germany, which was the biggest crowd I ever played to, which was uh, 70,000, and it was White Snake headline, then Aerosmith, then Dia. So that was oh, amazing. Wow. It, yeah, that, that was just one show. And then we came over to the US and we did, I don't know, four months, five months, something like that, of US stuff in Canada. And that was it. Nice, man. Yeah. That's pretty epic, man, touring with the old yeah. world and... Yeah, and there's tons, there's tons of video from the shows on YouTube, and it's a, it's a good look for it, 1990. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Of you jamming with Dio? Oh, and, and to, yeah, and towards the end of the tour, Ronnie was thinking about going back to Black Sabbath. Oh, really? Yeah, because I guess, you know, it was an attractive prospect for him. You know, it would have been, uh, I think the, the Dio thing was on the wane at that time a little bit. Uh, to be honest, and then obviously the grunge thing was happening, which people in the industry knew, but I don't think the regular regular people like us knew about it until '92. But I think people in the industry knew that there was change happening, and um, so he was thinking about doing Black Sabbath again. And so Geezer came out on the road to visit him at, in Minneapolis, and uh, so Geezer got up on stage and did. Uh, um, Neon Nights. Oh, cool. So, so I've got tape, I've got recording of me doing Neon Nights with Ronnie and Giza. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic, man. Giza is a hell of a drummer, man. I mean, no, bass, bass, bass player, player bass, bass player. player. Yeah, yeah. Geezer Butler. Easy mistake to make. Easy mistake to make. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, the, that was something high point. <laughs> that's fantastic man that's so cool yeah i got to see uh black sabbath uh in 2000 it was like a first big concert i ever got to go to man oh cool and they were incredible oh. yeah with ozzy of course. oh i yeah. think that, was that the reunion reunion yeah i think it cool. was the reunion yeah. they were doing yeah. a 2001 oz fest and uh yeah it was a huge concert man it was pretty impressive yeah. it was one of those yeah, those, yeah. It was one of oh, those yeah. turning points where I was just like, uh, yeah, this is definitely something I want to do with my life, man. Right uh, on. So, right on. Yeah. And, uh, freaking uh, Black Sabbath. They're just legendary. I got to take so the cool. woman out to see them soon, man. I know they're, that Ozzy's getting up there. He keeps doing his farewell tour every year. <laughs> so Hopefully we see some more. Hopefully hopefully we get one more record out, record out of that lineup. That'd, That'd be, be amazing. Awesome. Yeah, that really would, man. They're all getting up there, man. Even in 2001, yeah. they, were get, they were getting pretty old, man. So it's impressive that they're 20, 20 years <laughs> later still doing it. Oh, no, you look great, brother. You look great. <laughs> I'm getting up there. You know? Well, you know, it happens to the best of us, man. It's, uh, oh, yeah. Can't I, avoid it. Yeah. I was, uh, I'm starting to accept the fact that I'm not the young guy anymore, you know? Like, uh, uh what is it you know i just don't understand these kids and their tiktoks and all that shit going on you know it's these kids get out of my yard yeah i was always such a. I i always felt like i was the young guy gonna be the young guy forever man and now it's like i was just uh it's it's funny how the world starts shifting around you and there's nothing you could do about it man uh, changing yeah yeah <laughs> inevitable change man the inevitable changes of of reality that's funny so you did a lot more than just uh, than working with Dio, man. You got a uh, you got an uh, what is it? You played with uh, DC Four, good friends of mine there, and uh, also oh, yeah. with uh, Bang Tango. 
Uh, what's going on with uh, with DC4? I'm hoping you guys are going to start uh, playing shows again, maybe coming out with a new record. Well, Jeff is writing a new record. Yeah? And he was coming... Yeah, he was coming over here for a while and we were throwing some riffs down, some arrangements. He was bringing riffs over and I was throwing bits into the arrangements. And uh, so uh, I'm not sure when it'll be finished, but he is working on a new record. So there will be another record. That's fantastic news, man. Yeah, I really like DC4 and Jeff Duncan is just an incredible guitar player, man. He is an incredible guitar player. I mean, my friend, my friend from Jamaica said it best when he said that he calls him Ribbit. Ribbit? Jeff. He calls him Ribbit, yeah. He says, that's uh, Jeff, he says his, his, his rhythm sounds like a rhino coming through your living room. <laughs> yeah, man. That's so <laughs> true. His, his, his riffs are just heavy, man. Like, it's got a good 80s rock vibe, but they are friggin' heavy songs, man. DC4 yeah. is epic. I love that. And that stands for, uh, what, Duncan Clan 4, right? Duncan Clan Four, yes. Yeah. So it's him and uh, it's him and his brother. The two brothers, yeah. It's, two it's brothers. Yes, yeah, the two brothers and you, right? Yeah. 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 So it's, so it's Matt, Matt, Sean, and Jeff and me. That's awesome. Yeah, they used to play. Yeah, and they, they're all they're all as good as Jeff musically as well. I mean, I mean, they're all just fantastic players. Yeah, they were. They would always kick ass whenever they'd come to Vamp, man. I miss. I miss working with those guys. I got to hit Jeff up and have him come on the podcast, man. I haven't talked to him in a while. He's such a good dude. Yeah. Uh, well, cool, man. Yeah. And what about uh, Bang Tango? I know you just kind of toured with Bang Tango, right? But those yeah, guys are those just, guys are animals, man. Yeah. I was in. I was in the group, but I I didn't record with them or. Yeah. So it's not like I had a lot to do with the Bang Tango uh, legacy, if you want to call it legacy. I mean, the, the, the three albums they did, the first three albums were so cool. So such good records. Um, and I'm, you know, really a fan of those records. But um, yeah, I, I toured with them for like two years. And uh, yeah, Joe is Joe's great. Joe's, uh, he's a real character. Yeah, they're they're fun, man. I got to I was fortunate enough to work with them a couple times as well, and they always bring quite a party with them. Yeah, it's always funny. It's always laughing. Yeah, with those guys. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you, I don't know you, yeah, I don't know if you have any crazy stories from the road with those dudes, but uh, those dudes. Yeah, I don't know. They were always wild as hell at the at the club every time. Oh yeah. There. Oh yeah. Yeah. Joe's Joe's a, a party for sure. Well, yeah, nothing comes to mind. I'm terrible at that question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Crazy road story. Yeah, it's hard but to yeah, we, had, we, had a lot, we had a lot of fun. Yeah. Lots of laughs, a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. And I'm uh, I'm looking at your thing right here online, and uh, I actually don't recognize this one. There's a thing called uh, Ian Ryan Logan and Serpent's Ride. What was that? Oh, uh, he... <laughs> He's a fella from Brazil that um, had me record some guitar tracks for him. Uh, gosh, it must be ten years ago now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. going back a bit. Oh yeah. 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 In 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 ninety in ninety right after Dio, I did an album with Only Logan, who's uh, the singer of the Lynch Mob. Um, oh, okay. And so, so we got a we got a deal on Atlantic back then, and we we spent four years making a record, or three years, uh, which was a really good record. But at that time, a lot of those records were getting shelved, so we got shelved. So, so that record never came out, other than little bootleg copies and stuff, and only maybe a few copies at one point. But um, we're working on re-recording that, so that record. So that's going to be something I'm very proud of because the songs are really good. It was like a psychedelic album, you know. It was like a heavy, heavy sort of, uh, very zeppelin-y, of course, but uh, really good songs, really interesting stuff. That, one. that would amazing. have been 90, 92 to 94, I suppose, 91, 94. Oh, wow, so that was a while ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Groovy, but, man. Um, Still proud of the songs, so uh, would like it to come out, you know, at, at 
some you know get get people to hear it that'd be good that's cool. So you got a few things coming out right now. You got the that album. You got the King Cobra thing coming out, man. Yeah, mm. and uh, I mean, I guess these days people are in a lot of different things, you know. Yeah. It would be nice to be able to just do one thing, but um, and then uh, I just recently did a gig with a band in town here, Jimmy Romero's band, Helen Backs. Oh really? Helen yeah, Backs. You, you, you've, you've probably you've probably seen Jimmy Romero down at Vamps. Yeah, I I remembered him, but uh, I don't remember H- Helen Bax. Yeah, so I've been jamming with those guys. We did a gig and, and recorded a song. Cool. So, yeah. Let's see. Oh, I'm always getting this Hell's Kitchen stuff when I try to look it up. Helen Bax, oh. huh? Yeah, one word. It'll be there somewhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's all one word? Is that the, is yeah. that the deal you're yeah. doing? Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to check that out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see Helen Beck Instagram and everything like that. No. Oh no. Uh, uh, uh. Stuff. Yeah. Like he's that. actually making a movie. Their last album. Uh, they've got a movie, a proper movie companion to it. So I think they, I think they're calling the record Helen Beck's Three, and um, it's a really good record actually. And uh, there's actually a movie that he's filming right now, like a proper full-length movie with it really like a full 90 minute uh thing that's a lot of work yeah he's amazing um actually yeah really hard-working talented you know one of those guys churning out work all the time and he i don't know whether you saw the last dc4 video uh but it was um filmed at um counts in vegas in his Studio. Oh yeah, the, uh, we, Desert Moon Studios they have out here. Desert Moon Studios, and we it's a DC4 video, and we use green screen. So after we filmed ourselves performing live, they put up the green screen and they put uh, uh, Stony Curtis's Mustang car in front of it, and filmed you know the car, and then the video has got the car going into space with all these effects <laughs> and everything. It's a really it's a really good video. That's it's, awesome. Uh, it, it's a video for Atomic Highway, DC4 Atomic Highway. And Jimmy Romero made that video in three days. Really? Yeah, filmed two days and one day editing. It's amazing. That's fan. That's a lot of that's that's a lot of hard work he put in there, man. Editing the whole thing in a day. He must have been putting in a ten, twelve yeah. hour day just editing in the studio. Amazing, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, we're gearing up here at uh, at SBS Productions to start shooting more music videos as well. I've done a few oh. uh, with my own bands, but uh, I think coming up in like two weeks, we're shooting another video for. We're trying to start like actually producing other people's music videos. So it's going to be fun to get into that process and utilize some of this video equipment that we got going on. Right. Yeah. Right. Do you do green screen then? Uh, Will yeah. You be doing green? Yeah. We have green screen work and everything like that. We definitely, we don't have the, uh, the gigantic green screen wall that they no. have over desert moon. That's really impressive. Well, yeah. That's, that's quite an operation that, 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 that Danny's got going, hasn't he? With vamps and, and count oh, yeah. desert, desert moon and everything. Oh, that's guys. Uh, yeah, that green screen over there, you can roll a car straight through the roll-up doors onto a gigantic green screen, It's uh, yeah. and it's got the infinity corners and everything like that. I mean, that's just a piece of work. There's a lot to keep up, too, because you got to constantly be painting that wall all the time. Uh, the, oh, right. The corners get holes punched in them and everything, and it's just a pain uh, to maintain. Yeah. You know, so we use, we use the, uh, the cloth version of it all, so I can just throw it in the washer and oh. steam it real quick, and it's good to go. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, it's fun to Great. do all that green screen work, keyframe, and everything else. Yeah, we've done it a few videos. It must be getting much. It must yeah, be cool. Right? It must be getting so much easier to do green screen and the you know the editing side of it. You know, once oh, you've yeah. actually filmed the green screen, it's it's, it's 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 yeah, it's rather easy now, isn't it? It really is, man. I mean, anybody can really do it at this point. You know, it's uh. It's a simple like alpha key plugin, and you just you click on the color green that you're going to keyframe out, and it just it does it. Whatever track you put underneath it, it's going to be popping up behind you, and uh, and you can adjust the lines and everything on people. But it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty straightforward, man. Like I was very surprised at how quickly I was able to integrate it into my processes, and uh, and so now I'm offering it to other people as well because I'm fairly cool. confident in the my ability to do it. And, uh, yeah, we got a big, you know, it's like 12 foot green screen or whatever. It's big enough to handle most things. 
not quite a car or anything like that. But, you know, once things get going, we'll, we're definitely interested in, in getting a big warehouse for all of our PA equipment and, and doing big stuff like that. And, you know, it grows with okay. time. It grows with time. But yeah. it's fun. Yeah. And just about anybody can do it, man. You know, with uh, things like Adobe or uh, even, geez, like uh twitch and stuff like that they just have apps that automatically uh block people out and they you can superimpose yourself over the video games you're playing i don't know if you've seen the, the twitch stuff that's like kind of the new hot thing too um i don't know i may have i've seen a few videos where people are superimposed in videos and what have you you know their faces yeah. in, in movies and videos and stuff. oh yeah yeah i mean it's like uh anybody with a with 30 bucks you can get a, a cheap green screen put it behind them and when they're playing their online video game streams or whatever it's like a, a new big thing oh i yeah, see it just it puts them right in front of their screen and they're ready to go and it's just a simple little uh -huh. push of a button so yeah it's gotten real simple just about anybody can jump yeah. into that green screen game fairly fairly quick yeah yeah oh i gotta get one <laughs> you should man it's a lot of fun it's fun to just screw around with and and yeah. do dumb things, man. I'm always putting myself in uh, in space on my uh, on my YouTube channel. So with the space I station, <laughs> like that. So. I uh, I've got a little YouTube channel actually. Now, now you mentioned you uh, have that one. Stuff. Yeah, it's called Rowan Robertson Official. One word, Rowan Robertson Official. And all I what I do on there is I put up uh, play along videos of, of some of the Do stuff. And there's there's about um, there's only about three or four or live videos on there but I've got to get back to um, you know making more content for that because I enjoy doing it and there's and there's a group of people that are real loyal to it and they, they write on my you know, comments and everything and I really appreciate it you know that's fantastic. I'll have to put a little button or something at the, uh, oh, the end of the video thanks. for us to click on. It'll take you right over to the Rowan Robertson official. And I'll, I'll definitely yeah. put a, uh, a link in the description below as well that'll send you right over there, as well as any oh, like, social media or anything that you have going on. I'll definitely, it'll okay. all be linked in the description below the video here. And uh, yeah. Yeah, man, that's awesome. It's fun having a YouTube channel, man. It's a lot of fun, and you, you know, yeah. you get enough people looking at it. You know, you can get a little bit of money for advertising, which isn't the worst thing in the world. No, no, I got, um, I got flat. Two, two of my videos or three of them got flagged recently for copyright because. Oh, of course. I was doing playalongs to the old Dio stuff, and my understanding is that it's okay to get flagged for a copyright, but you don't want a copyright infringement. Or something like that. Yeah. So um, for us, it happens sometimes when I have guests on the show, and they'll yeah. have me play their video on YouTube, or they'll have me play one of their songs, and then they go, "You didn't have the right to play this song." And then I have to actually write an email back. I have to I have to challenge the uh, uh, YouTube robot and say, "No, no, no, no. That was the guest on my <laughs> show. The dude who right. owns the rights to that's sitting right next to me, and he's telling me to play the video." And then they contact the person who the video is from, and they say, they say that you gave them permission for this. And then oh. they just click a link, and it says, yeah, they're totally allowed to use my video. I gave them permission, and it's all good. And then oh, right. they don't demonetize you or anything like that. And right. It's just the process of going through it all and, and yeah. making it happen. But as long yeah. as you're the guy, right, or you, I mean, you know the people who, you know, like you, you'll contact them and say, hey, I'm, I'm challenging this on my YouTube video, and... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know who has. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't think at this point to monetize it. It's just uh, I don't know who has the rights to it. If it's the record company or what. Oh, uh, okay. But anyway, anyway, I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, with that, with it, when it's just like a. Uh... They'll send you a little copyright thing, and it, all they're going to do is make it to where you can't get paid by YouTube to use other people's stuff. But they're not going to take your video down. There's tons of people out there that just make their whole page based on everybody else's media that they cut, cut into pieces and share. Um, sure. Yeah. yeah. But, and then they, I think they just they, they have a little bit of their own original content or something. I don't know how those people are trying to get paid or what their, what their game plan is, but they ended up with like yeah. hundreds of thousands or millions of views just pushing other people's stuff all the time. So, oh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what their game is, but uh, they got to be getting something for it. But it's yeah. every time I do anything where that happens, yeah, I get the copyright thing going on. But that's cool. Yeah. I definitely want to check out your... Um, 
YouTube. And uh, so it's Rowan Robertson official. Yeah. I bet I can uh, pull it up real quick and give you that kind of thing as well here. I got a second computer hooked up. So it should be rocking here. Uh, freaking, uh, yeah, typing and talking at the same time is difficult. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a Jamie. Well. I don't have a Jamie for me pushing all the buttons like, uh, Frickin' uh, Joe Rogan. Oh, here we go. Here's a subscribe for you. I got like this here. Bam. We got that guy right there. Hit the subscribe button. And, oh, thanks. Uh, let's check out this first one. 740 Hey Angel with Rowan Robertson. Official. Got a yeah. uh, Gibson SG. Yeah, playing the SG. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I'll definitely have the link and I'll share the channel and everything. Oh, you're doing all right. You got over a thousand subscribers, bro. Yeah, yeah, it's starting to pick up. I've been doing it for over a year and, and uh, slowly, but um, but it's picking up a little bit. That's cool. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. To get paid, you only need a thousand. Once you get a thousand, you're getting paid, man. You got four thousand watch hours. You can click a little monetize button, and they'll give you money. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, but probably minimum. not with the probably not with the copyright uh, flags, though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably not with those. But uh, yeah, you know, it's probably not a, a right. whole ton of money until it gets into the millions. But uh, I'll yeah. be like, you have. 34 cents spend it wisely yeah exactly exactly <laughs> yeah that's why i'm doing the podcast thing it's like uh you know once i get to a thousand it's uh i can i can get advertising from other places besides just like the youtube money that they'll give me which won't be much in the beginning you know but sure. other, other yeah. places will give you decent money so that's why we started with the podcast format on this youtube gotcha. channel yeah. so yeah it's fun it's a lot of fun so well, yeah, great, it man. Is fun. yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So, well, yeah, I, uh, you know, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast, man. I know you didn't have a lot of time to uh, to hang out. You got you're a busy man with things to do. So I really okay. appreciate. I your was time. a bit rough today. Thank you for working with me, and thanks for having me on. I had fun. Yeah, it's been great talking to you, man. And uh, you got a lot coming out, right? So, what have people got to look forward to? Uh, they got the DC Four record coming out. You got the. Uh, the uh, King Cobra with Paul Shortino, and then yeah, it was the, uh, what was it? It's uh, Serpent's Ride. Is that the still still going under Serpent's Ride? Ian Ryan, Lo I Ian Ray Logan, and Serpent's Ride, or is that with Oni Logan? Uh huh. That, no, that one is uh, that's that's uh, out there. And then the other one that I wanted to mention again was Custard Pie. There's three songs on Spotify and everything like that. Custard Pie. Spotify. Custard Pie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna put out. We'll put out a new video for that in the next. Two week, uh, and that's for a song called "Eye of the Storm," which we're pretty proud of. Okay, yeah, and so I'll make sure. Oh, you wait, what? Yeah, I'll I'll post that on on the Custify official YouTube channel and my YouTube channel, and uh, yeah, we're, we're we're pretty proud of that one. That's fantastic. And is that on Spotify? I can put a Spotify link below as well. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, definitely thanks, check out all the links below and everything like that. I'll have everything lined up so you can check out Custard Pie on Spotify, and they've, I'll have the video links and everything for that as well. And your YouTube channel, you can learn how to play guitar with Ronald Robertson from friggin' Dio. How cool is that? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so, well, yeah, man, uh, this has been uh, To the Fulls with Jason Froberg. Hit the subscribe button, give us a like, ring the bell, and check out our social media. And thank you once again, uh, Rowan Robertson from Dio. What an honor to have you on the show. You've been amazing, man. Pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, bro. Well, you take it easy, man. Peace. Okay, Jason. See you around. Awesome. Thanks for watching To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We hear new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.